Hello and welcome to our channel. Today we're gonna learn how to export from a MySQL database to Excel using PHP. We're gonna use Composer, so make sure that you have it installed in your computer before getting started. The download instructions are in their website. We're gonna leave this link in the description of the video. Once you're sure you have it installed, you need to open your project and create a brand new file. In this file, we are just going to write an opening and a closing curly bracket and then we're gonna save. The name of this file needs to be composer.json. Once it's saved, we're gonna close the file and then we need to open our command console. We are going to write cmd in our Windows search bar and it's gonna open a new console. You need to know which is the path in which you have saved your project. In this case, I have it in my C and the name of the folder is called excel-php. I'm gonna copy the full path and then I'm gonna go back to my command console. Here I'm going to write cd, which is for change directory and then I'm gonna paste the full path of my project. Then I hit enter and it's gonna change the location. Once you are there, you need to copy this line and paste it. Composer require PHP Office PHP spreadsheet. This is going to indicate Composer the dependencies that we need from their packages. You need to wait a couple of minutes until the installation is completed. Once installation has been completed, a new folder will be added to our project, which will be called Vendor. This is what is going to help us to create and export the new Excel file. We are going to use two PHP files. One is going to contain the connection to the database and also retrieving the records from this database to be exported. The other one is the file that will have the actual button that will trigger the action to export. The one in which we are going to connect to the database and get the records is called libros.php.php. We have two functions here. One is connecting to the database and the second one is just retrieving all the records in this table and it's putting them in a specific format. Before we move on, you need to know that it doesn't really matter the method or functions that you use to connect to the database and retrieve your records. What really matters is that you have your final result in this same format. As you can see, in my database I have four records and I have five columns. Each of the records represent one element of a huge array. So your final result needs to be a, an array composed by different arrays and each of those arrays inside the big array need to be one record of the database. Inside each of the arrays you need to have the keys named as the same column name that you have in your database. In this case, I have ID underscore book and then name underscore book and so on. And this is the very same name that each of my keys in the array have. Of course, the values of each of them will be variable depending on what we have on the database. So as soon as your final array is in the same format as this one, this method should work for you as well, even if you don't connect and retrieve using the same functions that I am using. Next, in my index file that will have the button to export to Excel, I need to call some dependencies. I need to call the vendor autoload.php that was automatically added by the composer installation. Then I need to also call these two dependencies and then of course I need to also bring this other file. Then I am going to add a conditional that only if someone clicks the export button that I have here, which name is export, then it's going to process all of this. First, we need to create the array calling this function called get all which is actually the function that I am using to build my array. Then we are going to create a new document and also set our current sheet. After that, I'm going to name all of my headers because I don't want final users to see the actual name of my columns. So I'm going to manually put them here so they can be named however I want. There are some other ways in which you can put dynamic headers and I'm going to leave that in the description as comments in the final file that you can download from the link in the description of the video. But for now, we are going to put just the the column headers that I want. Then we need to set all those headers to be placed in column A1 of our spreadsheet. So this is what this, this line of code is doing. And since we are setting our headers in the row one, we are going to start putting our actual data in row two. That is what this line of code means. After that, we have set everything and we are ready to start putting our actual records in the final spreadsheet. Then we need to iterate in each of the results from the array that we saw at the beginning of the 
the video and set the columns and rows in which they are going to be placed. Everything starts at column 1. So in this case, this is going to be placed in row 2 and column 1 and this is going to be in row 2 and column 2 and so on and it's going to bring the value that we have in this array and in this specific key then once we have iterated into each of the rows of our result we need to start writing the actual file here first we need to specify which extension the file is going to be then we take the final document and the extension and use the create writer function from the php composer dependency here is where pretty much all the magic is happening and composer writes the document then we need to set two header rows one is for the format and the other one is for us to establish a name for the file then we need to add this line of code ob and clean so we can clear the buffer and then we add this final row in which we are saving our file and allowing the user to either save or just see the file after that you need to write exit and that's everything you need i'm going to go back to here and then i'm going to click export to excel and it's gonna ask me what I wanna do. I'm gonna just open it and see it. And as you can see, it placed all my headers with the same name that I specified here. And it just and after that it just placed all my rows in the columns and rows that I specified. If you want this part to be different and you don't wanna hard write the name of the columns, I'm gonna leave in the comments of this code some other ways of doing it. You can find the final file in the description of the video. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you find this useful and we are Power GI.